Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Happy Saturday. Today is phones in the house. 9th? March 9th? Something like that? Whatever. Whatever that second Saturday in March is, that's what this is. So I hope you all are doing well. Got uh, a better day than I expected going on out here. A little sun. Uh, we were forecasting some rain this morning and that just poof didn't happen. So. Consequently, I didn't make a trip to the Firewood Hill. Could have, but still got a lot going on. Got a lot to do. Uh, before I move on from the weather, sorry for not uh, getting something up last weekend, but it was a lost weekend completely. Uh, both Saturday and Sunday I spent uh, at the university with a team of my folks working on snow removal. Uh, we got a storm move in. Friday, you know, that's kind of typical. Oregon Oregon is a, a pain in the ass in the spring, especially southern Oregon. I can't say it any other way. Just when you think spring is kind of springing, winter comes slingshotting back in, and you can go from a day where you're in a t-shirt to snow the next day. No big deal at all. So that's what we had. Moved in Friday night dropped somewhere around six inches in Ashland by the time it was all said and done so like I say we we did some work around the, the res halls the apartments dining facility you know what what kids would need on the on the weekend and then we had to do a smaller version of that again on Sunday so like I say there was no time for saws but here we are, fast forward. It's uh, We've got a few more days of rain predicted next week, and then in the long-range forecast, I'm seeing, like, mid-60s, low-70s, and I'm like, yeah. We don't want it to get hot yet. We want that snowpack that's in the mountains to last, but, man, am I ready to get up on the mountain and make some videos. We're going to do some milling. I still need to order the, the rails, but I will do that. Um... Dan's cousin Billy up there you've heard him seen him in some of those videos on the hill he needs some uh, some posts that are about I think he said the tallest he needed were about 12 feet maybe a little bit more anyway there's a big big fur that died this fall winter whatever it's close enough and for what he needs them for it'll be perfect so that uh, what the hell is it 2100 I think I've actually forgotten the exact model, but Home Light 2100 I've got out there. Nice runner. A little rough looking, but boo, it is a nice runner. I've got a uh, milling chain for it back there. And yeah, so we'll be doing some videos on that. I still intend, if I can get my stuff together, to do a saw cut off with some of the small cube saws. Super 2, Mini Mac. I've got that skill. Is that a 1614 hanging up there, I think? Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. <sighs> and, you know, they've still got to do a 58cc cutoff one of these days, but one thing at a time. We'll get there. I've uh, been working on a butt ton. Well, no, that's not true. It's not a butt ton. Not compared to all of my home light stuff, but a tote of Pioneer parts. The tote will be, end up being about that size right there. And it has taken me weeks. I want to say I'm into my fourth week of working on that stuff. And it's not because it's difficult. It's no different than anything else. But I haven't built a database for Pioneer. Only, only the stuff that has crossed my, you know, through in, in a part slot, you know, by accident. I've never, never actively sought Pioneer, but that's changing over the years. I'm I'm keeping my eyes open, and if it's offered, I'm I'm going there now because I'm I'm really enjoying these P series saws. I've got another one coming in. Should be here next week sometime, so maybe next weekend. That'll be the video that I do or a video. Uh, it'll be very very similar, very similar to one that I just did a video on. So uh, I'm enjoying the P series. Uh, the P, P20 to, you know, P, what is it, P28? I've, I haven't got my hands on one of those. I know I've got a P26 in the attic. I've got a 1074 in the attic. That particular series, I mean, they're, 
there's nothing wrong with them at all. I, I just haven't gotten into them as much as the the farm light, farm saw, P38, anyway. Uh, this parts lot has a lot of the P farm light to P60 stuff in it. And I would say it's definitely weighted more towards the, the lower CC, the 65 CC saws, but there, there's some good stuff in there. There is some of the 1074 stuff, the P20, P26, P28. Again, it's not not massive. You guys aren't going to be blown away by it because, again, it came in one box. It will fit in one of those bins by the time it's all sorted and done. But uh, like I say, I with Homelight, I built a database, an access database. I went through every IPL that I had for Homelight, and then as I added more, or bought more IPLs that I didn't have, I'd add them in. So somewhere around nine to 10,000 parts are cataloged in that database listing everything that they fit. Well, I built that over years. With Pioneer, I hadn't done that. So uh, going through all this stuff, I'd have Adobe with like 20 IPLs open and I'd have that one part number pretty sure it would fit and if it fit there well I'm pretty sure it fits this one so I just kind of go through and make those new records now some of this stuff I'll never get more of but if I do it'll go quick it'll go real quick so this pioneer stuff came from a gentleman uh, northern Washington yeah and I'll be damned if I remember the town that he's in but Ron we, uh, I think he's a viewer of the channel. I'm pretty sure he is. If so, hey Ron, thank you once again for that Pioneer stuff. That uh, it's, it's been fun going through it, and I, I know some folks will benefit from it. Ron's been helping out a retired uh, saw shop, a guy who ran a saw shop, small engine repair up in uh, in his area, and what he's been doing over the, well, it seems like the last three four years. Was, I think we started with some home light, then some McCulloch, uh, some Sax Dolmar, Dolmar, I don't know why I mispronounced that, and then uh, this Pioneer stuff. Basically, the guy had the old stuff, so Ron would send it down my way and say, hey, figure out what it's worth and let's let's do something, you know, uh, you, you give me what, what you can. And so we have. So he's basically been a middleman to help out this retired you know, owner who, you know, he's getting older, things like that, and can use the money. So it's it's been good for me, it's been good for him, and hopefully it's good for the folks who can get the parts. So again, Ron, if you're watching this, thank you. I appreciate it on a lot of levels, including what you're doing for your friend up there. So, yeah. I got the second batch of parts in, and I'm going to pull you guys off the stand and see if I can do the walk without the fall. Uh, some stuff from Wisconsin and that is that so I've gone through the first batch I well this package took literally a month to show up so this is still part of the first batch that I need to to go through and add in I haven't even gone through it in a lot of detail but let's see yeah there's some good stuff in there too but in all these boxes there's going to be some good stuff and i think if i remember right lucas said that the bottom this thing is actually some chainsaw cases so in the end it may not have been worth it to have him ship those out here because shipping costs are so bloody high but whatever, when I get down to that part, if they are chainsaw cases, I'll probably do a special video on that. Just uh, to make them available for any of the collectors who might actually be willing to, to you know, deal with the cost of shipping. The reality is I'll have to sell those so cheap because of the cost of shipping, but that's okay. So anyway, I've got all that stuff to go through. And I'll tell you what, with my database, I can probably go through almost all of that in about the same amount of time it took me to go through those Pioneer parts because I've got everything cataloged or a lot of things and the Pioneer parts would have been in a box about that size or slightly smaller 
So that gives you an idea of how much time can be saved when you've got your stuff together. Ah, and that's my that's my super easy that didn't pay didn't uh, play nice on the mountain last time. I had put a new uh, check valve in it, and I think I had it cocked at a weird angle inside the carb because it just was not working. It uh, it was leaning out after every rev when it would go back down to idle and. I got back here and, and blew a little compressed air through there, and all of a sudden it was fine. So, who knows. So anyway, that's what I've got going on around here. Um, I've still got those saws that I picked up from the, the fellow in Grants Pass. It feels like that's been damn near a month ago, if not a month ago. <laughs> I've gotten through one, and I've got this 240 on the bench here that I'm almost through. I need to uh, to finish it up. And then the other ones that are out there, I think there's a 150, an XL12, a couple more of the Super 2's variants of the Super 2. Uh, anyway, I've got a pile of carburetors from Ed that I need to go through and I don't know... He told me. I forgot. We'll see what's in here. I don't know if there's going to be anything that's worthy of making a video on. Because if it's a bunch of HDCs, well, I've got those covered pretty well. But something in the back of my mind said that there were some HDBs mixed into here. We'll find out. Alright, Leon, none of these carbs will hold pressure satisfactorily enclosed as a wall barrel check valve kit. Perfect. Hopefully we won't need it, but if we do, we got it. SDC 49, so that's MAC. SDC 48, that's home light. Okay. That's... SDC blah 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 62 so that's home white. Well, we got a, quite a variety here. Here's a Zama C2 so that's home white. Wow. We have a Zama. What the hell is this? This might be from the McCulloch. I really don't like the way they label their carbs. C2S. So that would be a C2S 19, maybe? That'll be an interesting one. That I might do a video on. I haven't, uh, I know I haven't done that. And then we got a Tilly uh, HL141D. So, okay. There we go. Got a pile of the carbs to work for Ed. And there's one other gentleman who sent me a card for a super easy, I want to say it was an HTC 44 that he was having trouble with, and he wanted me to run it on one of my saws, which oh, I can do, since I've got that super easy sitting there. So anyway, that's kind of where things are at here in Southern Oregon. Uh, I'll try to get some content up that's a little more varied than just my mouth running, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you on the next one.